awakening. Have you felt it? <laughs> what is up, y'all? This is The Fan Awakens, episode 17, I believe. Episode 17, we're back. Me and Miguel are back in the booth, ready to talk all things Star Wars. And all things Star Wars this week is actually not a lot of Star Wars. Yeah, no. But it's a lot on a, a few topics, maybe one topic. But that topic is going to be all encompassing today. Um, but, you know, how are you feeling about Star Wars today, Miguel? Feeling good. How good? I don't know, at least three. Yeah. Um, three is pretty low, all right? Three is pretty, Out of pretty two. low. Especially. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, uh, I I was about to put your um sort of your commitment in question, but after hearing that, I guess not. Exactly. I'm feeling a four then. All right. Feeling a four. I mean, when you look at the room we're in, you're surrounded by Star Wars as usual. Yeah. Always. I mean, just around me, around Star Wars. But we got some interesting news. Yes, we do. Very interesting. Take it with a grain of salt, but it has been confirmed by almost every source around, and um. Is a reputable, um, well, I know a lot of people like to give BuzzFeed crap, but they do have some uh, reputable... Um, they have a lot of reputable sources. Uh, sources, but what is the word? Reporter. Yeah. They have, some, they have some good reporters over there. And um, other people have made calls, uh, people who have phone numbers that we don't have, of course. Mm-hmm. But the, the big rumor going around is that, the well, someone's been hired to write an actual Knights of the Old Republic script. Um, mm-hmm. So the news came out that Leda, I'm going to butcher her name, but Leda Calogridis uh, has been tapped to write the first film in a three film, in, you know, a trilogy. Yeah. The first installment for Knights of the Old Republic trilogy, which is supposed to be the next Star Wars film coming out, mm-hmm. which we know that the next film is going to be the Benioff and Weiss movies. Yep. So there's a lot of questions going on here. Um, is this confirmation that Benioff and Weiss are indeed doing uh, Knights of the Old Republic? Because every everybody kind of assumed that it was going to take place in that era, yeah. mainly because of their track record with Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anybody really honestly thought that we would be getting an actual adaptation of the, of the game, which... Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting you to finally play for your first time starting today. I mean, I've played a little, but very I mean, like long really ago. play. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I was young. You were really young. That game was not suited for a young Miguel. Yeah, a young Miguel also uh, apparently didn't know how to talk into a microphone. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. But um, yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see because the more I've been thinking about my Star Wars fandom and the birth of it. I mean, I've been a Star Wars fan my whole life, but the prequels got me into Star Wars. Mm -hmm. But there's, you know, everybody's seen the movies. What really got me so deep into the lore, I think the thing that really, the first thing that got me deep into the lore and how sort of grand this whole world is and the the big picture of it all was Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. Because it really opened my eyes to how much much there is within the galaxy. When you get to, you know, take control and sort of go throughout the entire galaxy on your own, free will kind of and you know meet all these different characters um sort of get into the minds of these characters and you know see all these different weapons these different ships these different um just things in the universe that Mm -hmm. you don't necessarily you see them in the movies but you know you have to buy books and read and do all that kind of stuff that i wasn't necessarily doing as a kid i was playing a lot of lucas arts games yes you were uh which we don't have anymore sadly no um and those really expand the world for you and so Beyond that, though, the game is just fantastic because the story is fantastic. Um, and so I think that it makes sense for them to make this movie. I think that it's sort of... Uh, when you think about how divided the fan base has been through the, the last few years, how do you start to mend that? By giving us something that will be fine with a general movie audience because you hear a name like Knights of the Old Republic, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. Everybody's on board. Yeah. You you I mean, dude. You show a trailer of of just lightsabers lighting up. I don't care. It doesn't have to be the biggest battle of all time, but show us a Jedi and a Sith army fighting. 
Dude, everybody's on board. Butts and seats. Butts and seats. You're going to make that bread. You put from the... I don't care that people didn't necessarily all love the last season of Game of Thrones. You put from the creators of Game of Thrones. People loved... People love Game of Thrones. Yes, they do. People love it. They're going to... That's automatically going to get people. And, you know, honestly, people who don't know... Who who didn't watch an episode of Game of Thrones, Mm -hmm. they're just going to say, oh, wow, people love that show. Yeah. (laughs) It's probably going to be good. And that'll get butts and seats. And... So, what are your thoughts? Do you are you on board with the idea of them adapting the video game, and do you think that it will be the greatest video da- game adaptation of all time with almost no knowledge? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do think it will because just the bar is low. <laughs> the, the bar, I mean, Detective Pikachu raised it a little bit. Mm-hmm. In your opinion, it's a pretty okay movie. I it's not terrible. I think it was terrible, but you think it was ter- okay. I we do. won't. We won't. We won't get Star into Wars. that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think the name value of Star Wars and them being having directed Game of Thrones really, I think, sets it apart from every other video game movie that's ever been created. Yeah, because you look at. I mean, the the sad truth though is sometimes. Look at something like Assassin's Creed. You have a great cast. You have a yeah. great lead. It just does not work. It wasn't that good. No, because you don't give people what they love about the games. You They screwed with a lot of stuff. Screwed with a lot of stuff. You put uh, 70% of it in modern day. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was disappointing. A big disappointment because nobody wants to... I'll say, they put 70% of the movie in modern day when about 5% of the games exactly. are in modern it's day. It's like, I, I don't play... Not that I play much, but I never played the the franchise to learn about the animus. I played to be an assassin in some old times, you know. Yeah. Uh, I tuned out when it went to the when it went back to the Earth stuff. I'm like, I mean, it's all Earth, but yeah. present, present day stuff. I was like, all right, let me just. I didn't it because it's one of my favorite. Yeah, but the point is, all time. if it was all. My point is, yeah, you if would it was not majority, like the franchise yeah. if they switch the playtime. Yeah, ninety-five percent no. animus and five percent no. assassin. No, it's lame. That is lame, and that's why the movie was kind of lame. Yeah, and so and then you go to Tomb Raider, Elisa Vikander, fantastic in the movie. Yes, everyone around her, not very good. The story, yeah. not great. Although I do enjoy the movie, and it's something I would buy. It's like I I enjoy it, mm-hmm. but that's majorly because Elisa Vikander's you know, in my top five actresses working. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's a stretch. Maybe top ten. Okay. She was number one last year. Yes, she was. Uh, she's somewhere on there. There's just a lot of people. She's a good actress. She's, she's great. Um, Oscar winning. Yes, she is. Um, but even then, you know, the bar isn't high. It is not. The top three video game movies of all time, probably Detective Pikachu, mm-hmm. Tomb Raider, yeah, Mortal Kombat, <laughs> and... The Mario Brothers. <laughs> no, 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 no. Sonic's gonna. <laughs> I don't think Sonic's gonna put any any of those in trouble. To we'll be see. honest, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but Night of the Old Republic. You that, know, like you have so much time in the past, about four thousand years before New Hope. Um, and the cool thing is, there's still one. Okay, one thing that needs to be addressed, though, and I want to know your opinion on what you think of this. Mm-hmm. So it takes place four thousand years in the past. Yeah, technology is pretty much the same. Uh huh. So do you think we need an explanation for that or not? Because I think it's funny how the evolution of Star Wars works. You look at until the sequel trilogy, you look at the prequels, and the technology in the prequels look vastly superior to the technology in the sequels, <laughs> um, just from what we saw. And that may be because we I saw play, huh? I think that may also just be because of the times. Yeah, but like, it just looked. I don't know. It's just funny how that works, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. And so, I, I mean, mean, I they're think just that, like, hey, we're at the peak of technology. We can't really progress. I mean, much that further. could be. It's like <laughs> four thousand years. Did we have a wheel four thousand years ago? I don't know. I don't know when the wheel was invented. Okay. I'm not a history buff. I don't know. You talk about BBY really... history. I'm I'm there. Before the Battle of Yavin, after the Battle of Yavin. You know, we had flying ships before. We had flying ships after. Um, no, we didn't <laughs> have an X-Wing, but we probably had an L-Wing or like 
Actually, no, we definitely didn't. But that's the point. They still have a Jedi Council. Mm-hmm. They have the Sith Army. They have, you know, Yaddle is a, a senior member of the Council in um, Knights of the Old Republic. Same okay. species as Yoda. Yep. Um, you have, and, and you still have lightsabers. You still have blasters. All this different kind of stuff. It just happens to take place 4,000 years in the past. Yeah. Um, ho- Who do you hope directs this thing? Because let's just assume... That it is the Benioff and Weiss uh-huh. movie. They are doing Nazi Little Republic. Um, the right and and to be clear, this writer she's very talented. She wrote Shutter Island, so she's written for Scorsese. She wrote Alita, and a lot of people can say what they want about that. I thought the script was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, when when movies are made, these big blockbusters, the credited writer, they turn it in, and everybody and the grandma f- and alters it. You know, yeah. The, the the director changes it on the day the script director the script um supervisor alters it they have producers who alter it everybody's got their hands on it yeah so you can say what you want but i i'm not really going to judge her too hard on that she wrote pretty much a lot of the first season of altered carbon on netflix okay and so she has some good credits she was also a producer on avatar so she's no stranger to the giant sci-fi billion dollar movie club mhm um but who who are your top uh, directing choices for this Knights of the Old Republic movie? Don't do this to me. Because I'm not good with directors. Okay, I'll throw out some of mine and I just want to hear your thoughts on each okay, one. Okay, thank you. Um because you can look at the biggest names, but I, I think a prereq for being a Star Wars director should be to be a Star Wars fan. For sure. Um because people can say what they want about Ryan Johnson's movie. There's no doubt he's a huge Star Wars fan. I think it is 100%. His, his, and that's his vision. I think a lot of people had their own ideas. And I think he probably had those ideas too. He just decided to do something else. To, he likes liberating expectations, all that. But I think you need to be a Star Wars fan to work on Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's a very unique thing that the fan base is so strong and so unique as far as like fandoms go. Yeah. With how deep the lore is. And you don't want to step on any toes because if you're not a, big star wars fan there's a lot of things that you can do in a movie that are going to cross other lines you know what i mean yeah and so i think you need to be a fan and so i think that i'll give you my top three choices okay Uh, see i know my number one choice and time wise i think there's a chance that it could happen because the choice i have for number one who i don't want to give away yet is working on another movie right now Okay. But I don't think they have anything planned afterwards. Okay. Um, my number two choice, because y- your mind wants to go to someone like Denis Villeneuve. I don't know if he's a Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Catherine Bigelow. I don't think she's a Star Wars fan. Maybe she is. I think she. I, I remember her being offered. I think or talked to about doing a Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. She. I don't think she was interested. Okay. And. When you go through, you want to have a qualified director, and I, I don't want to hate on anyone because you never know who's qualified until they do it. Yeah. Um, but I'm just going to go off of people I know. And so going off of that, I'm just going to choose my top three picks Okay. Uh, to direct the Benioff and Weiss movies, assuming they are these Knights of the Old Republic spinoff films or adaptations. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to go in order from uh, one, two, and three. No, three, two, then one. And... So first, Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni is my third pick okay. to direct this movie. And there's a lot of reasons. You know, he is the heir apparent to George Lucas. Yep. He is the most plugged in to Star Wars, I would say, out of really anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, the stories going on, the characters, um, the lore, and, and how to tell a story. Like, there's other people who are plugged in at Lucasfilm, mm-hmm. but he's the most talented storyteller. Yeah. Um, his pedigree with the Clone Wars with rebels now with the mandalorian directing the pilot and really being a co-producer on it um it just makes a lot of sense and we've been waiting for filoni to get his shot at directing live action Mm -hmm. for a long time and so this is kind of like a necessary step that he should be taking and i i think that he's probably been down to do it for a long time whatever reason they just see him as the animation guy uh but I mean, he talks to Pablo Hidalgo. He he's always working with a story group. Uh, he would give us like all the references we didn't know we wanted, mm-hmm. and it just makes a lot of sense. So, are you down with uh, Filoni 
yeah of course like i mean although i haven't seen much of the clone wars or rebels i've seen a couple episodes and story-wise they're great it's dark stuff man he got like, away with a lot of dark stuff for being on disney xd yeah yeah and imagine what he could do in the even wider star wars universe yeah and, uh, and especially on the, the big screen slate. yeah like not like it'll be a wider audience a wider audience and and the cool thing is that we can you know yes we have the video game to adapt but you can just pick and pull whatever you want and then do whatever you want with everything else you know you don't have to stick to the script exactly yeah you have a lot of freedom with it and i think that's a beautiful thing we saw how well dave filoni can still tell stories when he has such a limited time uh span and -hmm. you have so many things that you have to adhere to story-wise making something that takes place in that finite time between episode two and episode three he made a seven series a seven season series yeah and it all fit and it made us um sort of enjoy and love the prequels all that much more Mm -hmm. um cad bane on the shelf right there is a product of dave filoni um and so i would love for filoni to do it uh so now moving on i got my number two pick okay number two is another guy who is working heavily with filoni right now uh, another massive star wars fan and that is none other than john favreau yep uh john favreau massive star wars fan he came up with this idea for the mandalorian tv show he wrote four episodes before he even knew if it was going to happen and he's fantastic he's one of my favorite directors he's such a great dude you know he's happy hogan in the mcu yep. he directed iron man one and two he directed one of my favorite movies of all time chef great yep the jungle book great and now lion king coming out hopefully I'm sure great it's gonna be great <laughs> Um, and the cool thing shows you that like people might be, you know, how can he direct a Knights of the Old Republic movie if he's working on The Mandalorian? Why can't he? Exactly. Not only did he, he produce the entire Mandalorian series, season one, he, he wrote a lot of it while he was directing Lion King. Man of many talents right there. Man of many talents. And he, he talked at Star Wars Celebration on how he would go to the set of The, Lion, no, of the Mandalorian in the morning check up on it, work over there. Then he'd go from there to the set of The Lion King, work on that, post-production, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Then go back to The Mandalorian. He's a busy guy, and he, he can handle that kind of stuff. Yeah, and it shows he's dedicated. Dedicated, exactly. And if he's doing that, he's part of the Lucasfilm family, and he's part of the Disney family. He's a lifelong fan. He has a relationship with George Lucas. Mm-hmm. He has a relationship with Dave Filoni. And you know, and see, this is a better point, that if if Favreau was working on, uh, if he decided to direct or was offered to direct this Knights of the Old Republic movie, mm-hmm. you know Filoni would be a producer. Oh, yeah. Or he would be at least, cons- uh, you know, a consultant on the set all the time. Yeah. Uh, it'd be awesome, because then you'd have so many, you know, things you didn't even know you wanted, references to things, and even though it's so far in the past, you would still be able to squeeze different things in. It'd be awesome to see. Um so we have that. Uh, where Who would you rather have direct out of the two I've listed thus far? Oh, man, that's a tough one. But just because I've seen more of the things you could do, I think I'd go Favreau. with Favreau. And, you know, you could say, although I hope Filoni gets his shot at live action, um, Favreau has proven that not only can he direct live action, but he can direct live action blockbusters. Yeah. Um, and he's a, he kicked off the MCU. Yes, he did. So he could definitely kick off another franchise like that. Yeah. Um, but my number one pick, um, it's kind of a clear choice for me. Again, part of the Disney family, um, incredibly successful. They know how to handle pressure. They are off doing, and the reason I almost didn't put them on the list was because of availability. Mm-hmm. But then I remembered, I think their schedule is pretty clear after this year. They're working on a movie with Tom Holland in Cleveland. And that won't take very long to shoot, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's not going to take long. <laughs> um, that is none other than the Russo brothers of Avengers Endgame, Infinity War, Captain America Civil War, and Captain America the Winter Soldier fame. Yep. Also the community, Arrested mm-hmm. Development. Their career trajectory has just, it went from one point of the spectrum to a whole nother. Nobody expected them to be in the position they are now. Yeah. I mean, being like, 
when they came on to do Captain America the Winter Soldier, I had no idea who they were. Mm-hmm. I'd never seen anything they had done. I just saw that they were like sitcom kind of TV directors. Yeah. Um they come in, blow the doors off of the of really the whole universe mm-hmm. um film wise. And they've just kept going, you know, just improving and giving us crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And it makes so much sense because they're massive Star Wars fans. Yep. Um, Joe and Anthony Russo getting a lightsaber fight. Who's winning? Joe. You think Joe's winning? I don't know. I don't know Anthony, either. I Anthony's, might go Anthony. Anthony's taller. Correct? He's taller. He's got he's, the longer I'll reach. I'll say he's got the reach. And I feel like he's more reserved. I feel like you put a lightsaber in that man's hand. And he's about to go off. Yeah, I think that's... I'm going to put the money on Anthony. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Um, hopefully, so you really had to think about it for a moment. Yeah, you had to take a step back. I said, whoa, I got a little too much dip on my chip right a now. too much dip on your chip. Uh, but, um, you know, they said that, what did they say? They said in an interview, they were asked if they'd ever do another Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. And they asked, they said, you know, we're trying to do something else right now. That's why they're doing this Tom Holland movie. It's a lot smaller, simpler. I don't know simpler is the right word. It's still going to be a deep film. Mm-hmm. Subject matter has to do with the veteran coming back, but more and sort of falling to addiction and all that. But, you know, in the industry, it, you got to get it while it's hot, you know? Yeah. Well, you can get offered these giant movies. Don't turn them down. No. Um, not that I think they've made enough money off of Avengers to be fine. Yeah, but... Uh, but, like... When you're offered, if they get offered a Star Wars movie, and it's something that they're passionate about, man, it's how do you turn that down? Exactly. Um, and then you talk about who's going to be in the movie. Mm-hmm. It makes sense that we'll have Game of Thrones people. Yeah. Um, I got. I want Kit Harrington. I would love for him to lead this. It'd be cool. Um, we can have the girl who plays Yara. Mm-hmm. Guy who plays Davos. Let's look up some of these names. Yeah. Be, be Look polite. up the names. Yeah. Um, but because, you know, they're going to be casted by Nina Gold, who I believe she casted for um, The Force Awakens. She's casting for episode nine as well. Um, and she cast for Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it makes sense that we would have some of them carry over. Yeah. Um, so I also think that Christian Bale is almost a lock to be in this because they've been trying to get him in a Star Wars for years. Mm-hmm. He's been trying to we just, I think they want him in a good role that, might have franchise potential. Yeah. He was supposed to play uh, Beckett, as I've said often. Okay. He was played by Woody Harrelson, but that's a one-off uh, one off role in a movie that I think they all knew wasn't really going to be the biggest hit. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it made sense not to give that one to Bale. It's Bale's Bale, man. He's all time. Yeah. And you want him to have something really special. Uh, so who we got? Okay, so Davos is played by Liam Cunningham. Liam Cunningham. There you go. And Yara is played by Gemma Whalen. Gemma Whalen. See, I knew these names, but uh, that's awesome. I'd love to have both of them in there. Uh, another guy who I'd really like, and I know I'm just throwing Game of Thrones names out, but Alfie, uh, Alfie, Alfie Allen, Alfie Allen. I think he's awesome, man, and I could totally see him uh, as like a scoundrel, you know, or sort of a sort of just like a, a sort of a lower low life kind of guy. But you know, let him surprise you. Yeah. Um, Beyond that, Christian Bale, like I said, would be Ossium. Awesome. Ossium. Ossium. <laughs> it'd be Ossium. Stop. Um, <laughs> it'd be Ossium. That's going to be my ever right? <laughs> a a uh, sci-fi epic is going to be called Ossium. A-U-S-S-I-E-U-M. That's it. You lost it. I did lose it. <laughs> um, <laughs> lost it like, like in a good way? No. Damn, he lost it. Yeah, so like I don't 50, think fifty one fifty lost it. Fifty one fifty. All right, not the first time I've been told that, <laughs> but not the, <laughs> not the last. Not the last. I also think that Elisa Vikander would be awesome to see in a Star Wars movie. Daisy Ridley would. Oh wait, no, no, she's already in there. Uh, Kate Beck. Uh, uh, Stop. All right, I'm who, calling who the police. Who else you got? Who would be awesome from Game of Thrones? Oh no, you know. You got to have your big man in Sandor. In, yep, Sandor Clegane, played by none other than Rory McCann. Yeah, man, have him be some badass. Yeah, taking names, and that's it. Just yeah, taking him down. It. He's like a secretary, but a big secretary. Yeah. I mean, there's who else is in? That's the here? thing about Game of Thrones, though. It's been so wonderfully casted. Yeah, and obviously, I'd say Pedro Pascal, but he already got picked up, thankfully, by yep. the Mandalorian. 
which I'm okay with. Mm-hmm. Um, who else we got, man? Who played? Um, I don't know where he'd fit, but I I just love the guy. Uh, Giants main Tormund. Tormund is Christopher Heavju. I don't know how to say his last name. Well, I don't either. So, <laughs> but look, I we feel could take everybody. Would definitely right? be a scoundrel type. He could be like a. I could see him as a. Yeah, a, I'd love to have him as a droid. Can he voice a Wookiee? <laughs> no, it's just him. <laughs> just him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Red haired Wookiee. Um, this is, I, I really do think you could just take the entire Game of Thrones cast. Honestly, Eli, let's just put Sean Bean in there. He'll has die he, first act. He hasn't been in Star Wars. You're right. He'll die first act. Yes. <laughs> He's a guy that when you start the game, he just comes in and is like, come on, we need to go help Basila. No, here's the thing. He, Dies. he's a stormtrooper. We don't got stormtroopers. He's a g- random grunt that runs that's in messed there. Up. I'm not saying random grunt as that's in like, messed up. Let's say he's the first person we meet. Yep. He runs in a room. Bam! Gets shot with a blaster. Done. I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Sean Bean. Uh. Okay. Let me go. Let me ask you another question. Okay. Random. Celebrity cameo. Celebrity cameo. Who is it? Oh man. I'm just first looking. off another actor that's not going to be in the movie, but is in a cameo role. I'm going to throw out Matt Damon. Matt Damon? That's <laughs> yep. fair. I dig that. He always cameos and things. Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert is a better choice. I don't want Matt Damon in it. <laughs> That's too distracting. Colbert can be disguised. <laughs> uh, he whoa. could literally just pull a hobbit and just walk across the screen Dude, again. Colbert's got to be in episode nine. He, As a cameo of something. He's got to be. He has to be. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt Kevin Smith is too because he got to visit the set. Yeah. Uh, he's probably a... What if he's a Twi'lek? I don't know, man. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Hey, man. <laughs> His name's going to be like Silent Boblek. Silent Boblek. <laughs> it's going to be his name officially in canon. Um, Jay and Silent Bob 2 is coming out. Yeah, it is. Three. Three. Yeah. Three. Never saw the first two. Um, I just saw that one scene, the Goodwill Hunting scene. Yeah, it's time to go Goodwill Hunting. <laughs> Classic. Uh... We got you. Got to get on your Kevin Smith game, man. Yeah, I feel like you'll like his movies. I probably will. You probably will. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's really. I really hope that this is a real thing. Um, who know? Oh, what if? What if? And as as long as it doesn't feel shoehorned. What if? Why can't we have Knights of the Old Republic go to Batu? Why not? Why, Why not? not? That'd be awesome. That would be. Awesome. That would be pretty cool. And what if they... Dude, I don't know how they do it. It'd be really tough. What uh-huh. if they shot it at the park? Uh, no. <laughs> wait, wait. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Open it just to close it. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you got Coca-Cola marketing in the background. <laughs> Guys, I hope you like that one week of open because now we're closing for a month and a half. Um... <laughs> I'll give them time to okay, open look, Rise of the Resistance. If they did go to Batu, you know, when they close at night, I hope they come in just for one shot. One shot by a random tree, but it's technically in, in the park. Yeah. That'd be cool. I'll say because can it shoot anywhere that showed the Falcon? No. Can it show Poe's X Wing? Actually, we don't know that. How do you know? How long have YT model freighters been around? Probably not. Uh, maybe 4,000. 4,000 years. We still. I, <laughs> I don't think that. Lando Calrissian is walking around with a 4,000 year old ship. I'm not saying his is 4,000 years old. Yeah. But like, but. if that kind of ship is. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. I mean, it's a YT 1300. What about the YT 2? I don't know. I don't know. Why can't it be the first YT model? I'll say. And we definitely can't see anything with Poe's X Wing. No. There's, you know. That's why I said a random tree, some yeah. foliage. Just a little market corner. Yeah, exactly. We won't get that. <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, but one can dream. Um, See, we can go to Batu, but not Black Spire Outpost. That's true. Go to the other side of Batu, or you know, right, right there, down the right around the corner, right around the corner, right around Toontown. <laughs> <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> what was <I> saying? <laughs> Where's Roger Rabbit? Stop. Uh, when are we gonna visit Batu, man? 2020. 2020 for sure. Yep. Anaheim. 
2020 celebration. Uh, we're going to go to Target, buy one of those four-day park hopper passes, and just go I every thought you day said out. it was Costco. No, Target. Oh, Target. Yeah. Which is weird. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. But hey, I'm not complaining. That's cheaper than yeah, a lot anywhere cheaper. else. A lot cheaper than anything I've seen. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so that's kind of what we're hoping for. I'm pretty certain that's what they're going to give us. I think right now they're in sort of uh, begging the fans, not begging the fans, but uh, they're in like healing mode, Lucasfilm. Yeah. Let's heal the fan base. How better to do that than give us an adaptation of something that we all love? Mm -hmm. and it works on a wide audience um level yeah we don't have to like i mean it's not like they're giving us a a salacious crumb movie (laughs) they're not giving us like a max rebo max rebo musical (laughs) (laughs) directed by damien chazelle starring ryan gosling jeez is ryan gosling max rebo yes (laughs) no he's his brother (laughs) daryl daryl rebo yeah he's actually just daryl seb rebo Jesus. And he's going to be playing the piano. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I think it's it's awesome. And I would say very, 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 very few people still remember that video game because it came out in 2003. Oh, geez. Yeah, 2003. So it's not like a lot of people know it. I was five. You were, wow, you were five. I was eight. I think I played when I was 10. Yeah. Um, But yeah, exactly. So it's so far away. And it's legend, so you can pick and pull. You don't have to adhere to the story necessarily. You can just take what you want. You don't have to be like, well, we have to fall. You don't. Yeah. Because technically it doesn't exist. Um, so that that's kind of what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping we get the game, the video game movie that we've all wanted for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I hope that it shows. And, and not only that, I hope it sets a precedent for video game movies that they can't go on the cheap yeah. anymore. <laughs> It's like, damn, Star Wars did it, and now... We step our game up. Yeah, we, hopefully we don't get as many Sonic the Hedgehog-looking things. <laughs> um, you know, Assassin's Creed deals where they... I mean, it's just weird. It's just yeah. weird. Why, man? Why? I don't know. Do we get so many poor adaptations of video games. It's cough, a problem. Cough, cough, Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, cough, cough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's so hard to come up with something. Immortal Kombat, Tomb Raider, Rampage. Uh, even though I like Tomb Raider and I like Mortal Kombat, kind of. Did not like Rampage. Rampage, I did not like. <laughs> it was bad. Uh, what else? What else we get recently? Um, recently? Well, can we count that Adam Sandler movie with Peter Dinklage and. Oh, Tim? Pixels? Yeah. No, we cannot. It doesn't it was count. Bad. It doesn't exist. It was very bad. Tron! Tron wasn't a wasn't video, a video game. game. It is but, a video game. Oh, it's so good. That's right. The original. That's cool. It's good. It's cool. You like the original? Yeah. I didn't know you were a fan of the original. I thought yeah. you were just a fan of Legacy. I like both. Okay. I respect that. Yeah. I mean, Legacy, obviously, I prefer because it doesn't look dated. <laughs> what about Gamer with Gerard Butler? That doesn't exist. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What about oh, Detective Pikachu? Detective Pikachu is alright. It's alright. I didn't like it. I know you didn't. I enjoyed it. I think there's some cool things. Like Bulbasaur. Yeah, Bulbasaur was awesome. I almost would give it a positive review just because of him. Just for Bulbasaur. It'd be a positive review, but half of it be, would be the five minute Bulbasaur yeah. scene. <laughs> Probably three minute. But, you know, Star Wars. Star Wars. Celebration 2020. I want that confirmation. We better get a confirmation. Episode 9 will be done. We'll be looking to the future. Hopefully, we're all happy. We're not all going to be happy. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be crying happy. and broke. Oh, uh, that's going to be the the week that I go broke. Think about this though. What if because it lines up pretty well? Mm-hmm. If celebration is say in April again, yeah, 2020. Episode nine comes out in December. W- what if they uh, release a Blu-ray at celebration? And they got like celebration exclusive covers That'd be and cool. stuff. That'd be awesome. That would be nice. Yeah, it would. So celebration twenty twenty, my wish list is that we have a panel of a uh you know, the big panel isn't titled. Benny Off and Wise come out, Kit Harrington comes out, Christian Bale comes out. That sounds great. Yeah. That's my goal. Knights of the Old Republic gets a remaster. 
That would be wonderful. You remember those people that were trying? Yeah. They got pretty far and they got shut down yeah, recently. They're... Yep. Why shut them down? Unless you're going to do it yourself. Please. Yeah, I'd hope. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> we can dream, guys. We can dream. We got to do so. I feel like I want to just sit in the Lucasfilm office, you know, and just rant. It's up to us, guys. Ramble. It's up to us, guys. We got to do something with the world. God, <laughs> Thanos should have killed all of us. And with that, I think it's time to end the episode. Yeah. And before I start bringing <laughs> it, uh, thank you all for listening to episode 17 of The Fan Awakens. We will see you. I think we're going to start going bi-weekly or, I mean, twice a week if we can. So hopefully we'll see you sooner than later. But with that, may the force be with you all. Goodbye, Miguel. Goodbye. Actually, you're not going anywhere. Okay. Okay.